Okay, so welcome to part two of our interactive dashboard demo. The goal of part two is to essentially add some more interactivity to the dashboard that we built out in part one. So looking at our original dashboard, you'll see that we chose to visualize three different pairs of metrics. We're showing hits and average, at-bats and RBI, and stolen base and stolen base rate. But what if a user would rather see runs and caught stealing or triples and strikeouts? What if they want to see any different combination of the columns that we've included here? To allow that to happen, we need to create a dynamic version of one of these charts such that a user can select any two metrics and those metrics would be visualized. So let's start by just rearranging things a little bit. I'm going to shift click these two charts, shrink them down just a little bit, and I'm going to just reposition one above the other. And then this third one is the one that I'm going to turn into my dynamic chart. So I'm going to drag this out and make this kind of the featured chart in the dashboard. And first things first, we need to tell the user that they can select metrics here. So let's say select metric one right here in X14. We make it bold, italic, give it a right align. And I'll just fill the cell right next to it, Y14 with a light yellow fill, kind of to match this data validation cell up here in S2. And then same deal here in column AA. Select metric two. You can use the little format painter shortcut there. Give it the same fill. And now let's just turn these into data validation cells with drop down lists, just like our player name. If you recall, I can just unhide these two columns and my metrics list lives right here in column AH. So in Y14, I'll go into data, data validation. Let's allow a list and our source list is AH2 through AH15. There you go. And then select metric two, same process, data validation list and the same source array. So now a user can select from any of the metrics and choose any pair. So I'll do a little bit of formatting there just to center and bold, format painter. And why don't we hide our source list because we don't need that anymore. Okay, so now you can select any two metrics and we want those metrics to be visualized here in this chart instead of having the chart reading from a fixed array from the table above. There are a couple ways to do this. And the first way is to take a similar approach that we took with our animated overlapping area chart, which is to create a new dynamic source data array down below the chart. And if we were going to do that, we could just type in our years and drag it down and fill a series and create headers based on the metrics selections, one and two. And now what we could do is use combination of functions like index and match to actually populate the correct data here by indexing this array and matching to the correct year in column R and metric in row four. That would look something like this equals index. Here's our entire source data array. Fix it with F4. The row number that we want to move down to, we're going to match the year here, fix the X. We're going to match that within the year source array, which is R5 through R10. F4, zero just means I want an exact match. And then a comma over to which column I want to pull from my array. That's another match function where I'm going to be matching the metric header. I'm going to fix the row 32 because my headers always live in row 32. I'm going to search for that within the metric header array, which is S4 through AF4, fixed with F4, comma zero, because it's exact match, close two parentheses, hit enter, and then because I've set my reference types well, I can apply it all the way to both metrics. And essentially what that does is it pulls in the data from somewhere up here based on the two metrics selected. 
So at bats, 242, 611, that matches. Hits 52, 185, hits 52, 185. And as you can see, change the drop down and the data in the source data changes as well. So that's option one. I could just basically drag my source reference down to this dynamic array that I've built and voila, I'd be done. I don't wanna take that approach. I wanna show you a slightly more elegant way to do this without having to build this random floating source data array below my chart. Not that this is the worst thing in the world. You know, you could just throw a white font on it and no one will know it's there. You know, the danger of doing that is that someone inevitably adds a row or a column or doesn't see it and deletes something and boom, there goes all your hard work. So that is one option. The option that I prefer that I'm gonna show you right now is to use the match function, but to use it in the context of an offset function that we're gonna build into a named range. And what that will do is allow us to pull in dynamically data from the correct column into our chart without having to build another source data array somewhere. So let's get to it. We'll head up into our formulas tab, define a new name, and we're gonna call this metric one. We'll repeat the process for metric two eventually. And instead of a fixed reference here, we're gonna start by typing an offset function. And within the offset function, our starting point will be cell S5. And then the number of rows that we want to shift that starting point is zero because our first data point should always be the 2010 data point, which is right there in row five. But then if I comma over to the column offset, this is where we need to get creative. Because if you think about it, when a user selects AB in the dropdown in cell Y14, then we don't want to shift our starting point at all because at bats are in column S. If, however, the user selected H or hits here in Y14, then we do want to shift our starting point one column to the right so that we get to our hits column. So we know this piece of the function needs to be dynamic. And to do that, we're going to insert a match function. And all we'll do here is try to match the value that the user entered in Y14 within the array of headers in row four. And note that you need a one-dimensional array in order for the match function to work. And the last piece of match is the match type, which is zero for exact match. Close the parenthesis, and we're almost done, except we have to make one final adjustment, which is to subtract one. And if you think about it, it's because if a user selected AB, the match function says, okay, I'm gonna find AB within this array in row four. There it is in the first cell in that array, so the match function returns the number one, and the number one in the context of an offset function tells Excel, okay, now move our starting point one column to the right, which would get you to the hits column where we really wanted the values in at bats. So the minus one just corrects for that. Comma to the second to last component of the offset function, which is the height of our resulting array. In this case, we want six data points, one for each year. So the height will always be six and the width will always be just one column wide. Close the parenthesis, press OK, and we've got metric one defined. Let's do the same thing, define a name for metric two. And you should be a pro at this by now. We're gonna use the offset function again. And really the only thing that's gonna change is which metric we're matching. In this case, it's gonna be AB14 instead of Y14. So our starting points there, we don't want to shift any rows. Column shift is a function of matching the value in AB14 within our header row. Exact match, close one parenthesis, minus one. Height is six, width is one, close it, okay. Now that brings us to our last step, which is just editing the series within this chart to read from our new named ranges instead of these fixed ranges here. So let's right click, select the data, and here where it says stolen bases, I'm gonna edit this, and for values, everything after the exclamation point, I'm gonna replace with metric one, which is the name of our first named array. And for our second one, 
delete everything after the exclamation point, call it metric two, press OK. In both cases, my x-axis will remain fixed as just these six years. That's OK. And I can press OK. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that the names of the series didn't change. So they're still called stolen bases and stolen base percentage. But in this case, I'm actually visualizing at bats and runs. So Excel won't be able to dynamically change your axis labels in the traditional way. So we're going to do a little workaround and delete the labels here and just clear a little bit of room for ourselves. And I'm going to get a little bit fancy here and insert a text box. And I can set this text box to just equal the value in some cell. So I'm going to set this text box to equal whatever is in Y14. And I'll center it. There we go. I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees, do a little formatting to get rid of the fill and the border. And I'm going to drag that here like a makeshift axis title and then copy and paste it again, drag it over here, flip it, and set this one equal to AB14, which is the second metric that the user has selected. So I've created kind of my own hacked versions of axis labels, but what that will do is allow those to change as the user changes the dropdown. So as you can see here, I'm looking at at bats and RBIs just to mirror this lower chart. And it looks like it matches nicely. Let's try doing the same thing with the top chart. Hits and average. There you go, 271. All matches up. And there you go. So we, we've just added a cool new layer of interactivity to make a truly dynamic user-facing dashboard in Excel.